In order for you to become a solid AI engineer, there are some skills that you need to master. But most importantly, do you understand what are the levels of those skills? What kind of applications, large language applications, you need to sort of master in order to get really good. In this case, become a solid AI engineer. And you can see here, we have a few five skills or five large language model applications that I believe if you are able to understand these, all of these, because it's a pyramid, then you should be pretty good uh, at really harnessing the meaning of an AI engineer. At the bottom here, we have what we call the general Q and A. And then at the top, we have the chat bot, we have RAG, agents and LLM OS. Now stick around till the end of this video because at the end of this video, I have a surprise for you. I will tell you which one of these skills are the most important ones that you should probably pay more attention to in order for you to actually get jobs and actually start to help businesses with AI. So at the base here, we see we have this general Q and A. What is this? Well, this is the question and answering system, the simplistic system that we can put together. So essentially we have here is the prompt that we can write and we pass the prompt through a large language model and the large language model because it was trained on a lot of different data point, data sets and so forth, is able to give us a response. Okay. Now, some of the use cases for this simple interaction, this simple layer, I should say, some of the use cases would be for help center or customer support, because the idea is very simple. You go in and type questions, and then you get the answers. Now, the next level, as you see here, is what we call chatbot. So when it comes to chatbot, we're talking about there's got to be some sort of a conversation happening, right? So you type your questions, and the bot itself, in this case, it's based on a large language model, is able to respond back, but back and forth. So you type an answer or a question and you get an answer. Now for this to happen here, we have to enhance what we had before. It's not just a Q&A, a simple Q&A system. Because in this case here, we need to understand that in order for this back and forth to happen, as you converse, as you are chatting with the bot, there should be some sort of a context that is kept. So the context in this case is what we call a memory. So memory allows us to conserve, allows us to keep that context of what's happening. Because you can imagine if I were to type something, hello, my name is Paolo. And then at some point in our conversation in the chatbot, and I say, what is my name? And if the chatbot is not able to conserve or to keep that memory, or in this case, the context, then obviously we will have some issue because it won't know who Paolo is because it wasn't able to save in memory. So it's important to have this component of memory when it comes to chatbots. Now I'm simplifying things here. There's of course a lot more uh, that comes with it, but an overview of a conversational chatbot is as what I'm showing you here. Now we have a few use cases here for chatbot. We can use them also for customer service. Now the great thing here is that the level is a little bit different. It's because the chatbot itself, as I said, has some sort of memory. So it can recall the previous conversations up or down, okay, as the conversation keeps going. And so also can be used in a language learning system where users can come in and start asking questions about what is the word X, Y, and Z in certain language. And so the chatbot will be able to interact with the user that way. Okay, so we looked at the general Q and A, the chatbot, that's what we just looked at. And next we go to the RAG section. What is RAG? RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. What does that really mean? Let's go ahead and take a look. So when we talk about large language models, we understand that large language models were trained on massive amount of data, textual data, audio, and so many, so many different kinds of data. And so it has this knowledge base that's very solid of the world, the corpus of the world, essentially. But the problem is, it only knows what it knows. And so it's important if we want to actually augment our system, make it so that we can, for instance, pass on our own documents into, in this case, our large large model. So now it would know more than what it already knows. So this is important because the large, large model will have a context 
of newer information of specific information that you pass in so you can imagine if you have your own documents your own pdf files and you want to be able to use large language model to communicate or to retrieve information from your data then that's when you would use rag retrieval augmented generation so essentially you are adding or injecting data onto the pre-existing data okay superficially right and so this is good because now the large language model is going to have the context of your specific data so it's huge let's look at the overview of a rag system so rag system essentially is at the top we have documents and these documents needs to be chopped into small pieces small documents and then they go through a process of embedding so essentially we are extracting that and create a numerical representation vector representation of those documents and that is what is actually saved as embeddings into a database usually it's a vector database so a special kind of database if you want to learn more about vector databases just click one of the links somewhere here and you're going to learn more about vector databases. i have a full mini course on that the idea now here in a rag system is that the query when it comes in so when users pass in a query or a question that also has to go through the process of embedding because now we have the documents or embeddings and so the question coming in has to be transformed into embeddings makes sense because then that's what's uh, used to do similarity search which then is taken all that information is taken find all those similar pieces of data which are conforming or are similar to the query close they're close to the query that was passed in that's what's used to actually pass through the large language model so we can get the all right so that's great now i'm going to give you a fuller view a deeper dive on right because that's very important so again at the top level we have these documents so we chop those documents we parse them we pre-process them as we call into smaller documents smaller pieces okay and this is what we call chunking so chunking just cutting everything in smaller pieces because these are the pieces that are then put into or through an embedding model as i said and that is what we call vectorization so we're vectorizing our embeddings and so that is the information that is again saved into a vector databases so these are special databases this whole process is what we call indexing right so essentially there's index being created just like you would see in an index um, of in the back of a book of some sort so that it's easier to find something that we're looking for right with the index and so now the user comes in and has a query and this goes through the process of embedding because we need to vectorize this as well and then once that is vectorized that is what's actually it's passed through the vector database and we do the comparison the similarity search to find relevant documents so these are actually what are retrieved these documents are retrieved that's why retrieval ah and then passed along with the prompts and everything that's why the augmentation we augmented what we what came first and then with relevant documents and that's when we pass the query as well and everything and then pass all of that information into the large language model that's why we get more accurate response pertaining to our system pertaining to our query so this is an overview of rag system now the one thing i didn't mention right away is that we can also include what we call the classical nlp tasks so natural language processing you need to understand that large language models are really good at actually classifying certain things so they're good at classifying a text and so there is also a way in which we can take a large language model and create systems, labeling systems, and so many, many other things. Now, this is very important because now we are processing, we're using the power of large language models, again, to do things such as, again, text classification and labeling systems and so forth. So imagine you work at a place where you are delivering products or where you do shipping of products to your users. And then you receive a message that says something like this. I never received my package. Now you want to build a system that is able to analyze, in this case, this message or this sentence to see, okay, what is the sentiment? Is it happy? Is it neutral? Or is it unhappy? Okay, so positive or negative. And so we can leverage large language model. They were really good at that to create such system. Okay, so we've looked at general Q&A, chatbot, we looked at RAG, as you know now, and next we're gonna look at 
the one I think the most exciting <laughs> pillars here, which is agents. Now let's look what is an agent. I think it's important for us to understand exactly what that is. But before we do that, let's look at motivation behind why would we want an agent. So if you look at the large language model, we know that we can pass in a query and something like that says, how old is universe? And the large language model, because it has this knowledge base, it will be able to answer the question gives us the answer. But what happens if we ask it a different question? Let's say we say, how old is my dog, June, right? Well, as you know, we talked about RAG, the large language model in this case doesn't know who June is. It may actually think June is, in this case, the month of June. So there's a lot of confusion here. And so goes through the knowledge base and it doesn't really know, okay, what is this June, dog June? I, I don't know. I don't have the context, right? And so it will give you the wrong answer. It will hallucinate. It will give you just a made up answer because that's what large language models tend to do. But how cool would that be if we had the same system where we pass in a question, a query, and the large language model itself doesn't know how to answer a question. But the beauty here is that we can create a system where we can actually delegate this information or this query, the large language model doesn't know, to an agent. The agent will be able to then find that answer by calling certain tools and do all sorts of things. And that is what an agent is. That's the beauty of having an agent because it aids, in this case, the large language model. So essentially, it helps overcome the, the shortcomings of an actual large language model because they can hallucinate. And so it will delegate the large language model, delegates to the agent to go do something. And so that's how we ended up getting the answer that we need, the correct answer, not hallucination. The agents have many ways, many ways of working. So in this case, the agent is able to work with the large language model and then invoke in this case some tools for instance the tool could be to go and search the web to find the right answer or query a sql database local or remote or interact with a csv file or pdf file or even call a different tool out there an api so you can see that agents are really great for so many reasons because now they're able to go out and do things on behalf of a large language model, in this case, on our behalf. So a good way to understand an agent would be, so imagine that we're building a travel company, an online traveling company. So in this case here, we know that people come in with their queries or their things that they want to do. They want to book a flight. So they do so, and they are able to get the flight that they want. But the beauty of having agents is that we can now look, as they come in, we can actually allow the system to be a little bit more clever through agents. So imagine the person comes back in a few months later, we can actually personalize this whole system to this person, because we've seen how they behave with the things that they do when they come to our website in this case. So this would be the agent's work. So the agent will be able to use tools to or APIs and many other things to actually personalize the recommendation, make sure that they can also go and browse the history of this person and look at the previous vacations and activities and then bring back the correct answer or steps or recommendation for this user. So we can see uh, how important agents are. And another use case here that is that imagine that you want to write a report. Now, usually if you want to write a report, you will have a lot of different people that will help you. You have the, you, the writer, and then somebody to edit or read it or do something with your report, right? And also do research and everything. Now, you can imagine once you have agents, you can actually task the agents, because you can have more than one agent, to do all sorts of things. So you can see in this example here, I can say, okay, once I have all my agents set up, I can say, hey, go ahead and write me a report on last month uh, profits and loss of X and Y Z company. And so the agent is actually going to go and say, okay, this is, I know exactly how to do that. Well, I actually don't, but I'm going to delegate it. So the first agent here is going to start because this will be an event, a trigger event, and go through the whole system to get different agents to do certain things, right? So this is a little bit more complicated. But the idea is that we can take one agent and put through with other agents that can do things. So we can have one agent that does research, there's an agent that takes the research and writes up a 
draft essentially another agent will go back and look at the draft and rewrite it and so this whole system of agents right multi-agent systems essentially allows you at the end to have the actual response or even an action because it could be also an action that needs to be happening so i hope you're getting the power of agents so the main characteristics of agents is that agents are adaptable so they can actually learn from the system itself how things are working and they adapt themselves and also is that they are interactive so they interact with not only the users but also within other agents so you can create a plethora a fleet of agents that can interact with each other to do certain tasks and they're goal driven they're just told do x y and z and they go and do exactly that now let's look at some use cases we've seen this so customer service chatbots that would be a good use case personal assistance to go and go ahead and do x y and z and then go do x y and z and b and c and so forth data analysis that's a real good one and also uh, for smart home systems and so forth okay so agents are really really important okay so we've looked at general qa chatbot so we're going up in knowledge and rag agents we looked at them right now and now we're going to look at the top of everything which is the llm os what is this so the idea is very simple with llm os so essentially is futuristic um, idea really of looking at large language model as the center of or the center hub of an operating system that's why OS operating system. It's very interesting because now here, what we're doing here, we're saying, okay, we can actually use this multi modality. So instead of just using text, we can use text images and videos and so forth, as well as multi agents. So we can use many agents to put into this hub that will convey, or at least will remind us of an actual operating system, a computer operating system. So the idea would be something like this. We have a, unified for instance user interface so that we can interface allow users to interface with our system and this is going to be attached in this case to a data processing engine and we'll have different layers so each layer we have application layer we have the calendar manager you can imagine what that does is that the large language model is able to delegate all the things that need to be done so you can imagine you can come in as a person say hey uh, make sure that uh, you give me all of the details about a trip that i'm planning or plan a trip for me uh, in two months, eight X, Y, Z, make sure you go ahead and put in my calendar and give me a summary of things I want to be able to do in France, for instance. As you can see now, the operating system itself, because it's based on large language models, is able to go through all this process of creating a calendar because it uses a calendar manager to put the dates and the calendar and so forth, emailing you with all the itineraries and everything, and even put some something in the social media to say, hey, I'm going to Paris in two months or something like that, and many, many other things, right? So this is just more of a futuristic overview of what could happen in the future to understand where we're going with large language models, AI, and so forth. Now, this is what you've been waiting for. We went through the whole process from the bottom up. And now, where should you focus? Well, you should be focusing on the RAG and agents, because this is the, I would say, the core of AI, Gen AI, and everything. So understanding how agents work, but also RAG systems, because that's what all multi-billion dollar companies are being created right now. They are focusing on RAG and agents. So if you focus on RAG and agents, really hone in your skills on that, then you should be really good. Okay, so that's about it. I gave you some sort of a guide so you understand what it takes to become a solid AI engineer. So you have to understand all these levels. Now, I went really fast because I want to make this fast and not long drawn. Okay, as it is, it's getting really, really long. But I hope this helps. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and like this video, share this video. And if you have any questions at all, go ahead and ask them in the Q&A below. And thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. I hope this was helpful. If that was the case, please don't forget to go ahead and leave a comment and let me know what you think. And again, thank you so much for your time. Till next time, be well.